Today we talk about customer service. Is your customer service planned? And do you have a strategy for it? Or is it haphazard and there's no particular thing that you have in mind? We discuss today and we talk about the strategies that you could put in place to make sure that your business is leveraging and monetizing high-level customer service. I'm Michael Logan. This is The Common Sense Show. You're listening to The Common Sense Show. If you've just started a new business, or if you're just thinking about it, this podcast is for you. Michael Logan has a stellar track record coaching small businesses to achieve six-figure revenue streams. The advice on this show is what has allowed him to have over 15 years of experience as an entrepreneur. Here is your host, Michael Logan. Welcome to The Common Sense Show. And today we're talking about customer service strategies and how you can put into place exactly what you need to do to ensure that your customer service is top notch. And so I was reading the book by Micah Solomon that is called Ignore Your Customers and They Will Go Away. And there are so many points in the book and, you know, over time I'll release them because I love talking about strategies. So like I'll take a customer service theme and then we'll talk about that in an episode and uh, we'll do another one in in weeks or months or a year later or whatever but we're going to talk today about customer service strategy and types of customer service and you're not you're never too small whether you're a solopreneur or whether you have one employee or two employees you need to have a customer service strategy that you can deploy in the way that actually helps your business make money you know in the book in the section where it talked about customer service specific to styling of customer service, it mentions Richard Branson. And uh, one of the things that Richard Branson says is that he considers for Virgin uh, companies the style of service versus the uh, more so than anything else. So style of service is more important to him than than anything else, making sure that his individuals that work for his company um, understand that they can have a little bit of their own individuality coupled with the strategy for their, their, the company's strategy for customer service. So um, one of the things that the style of service talks about is, you know, maybe ditching some, a little bit of the formality and focusing on engagement with customers rather than the formality of engaging with customers. Now, granted, it depends on what type of business that you're running, of course, and what part of the world you're in. So we have listeners of this podcast who live in different countries and around the United States and in multiple states. And you may be wondering to yourself, well, in in my particular area of the world, it's a little more formalized, but they compared in the book what they call Stepford service versus style of service. Now, Stepford service, do you remember the movie Stepford Wives? Hello, everyone. I'm Mrs. Wellington. Welcome to Stepford. Oh, Joanna. Joanna, hi. It was a movie that came out maybe in the early 2000s with uh, Nicole Kidman. And one of the things it said was, uh, the movie basically was about Nicole Kidman and Matthew Broderick. They lived in New York City and they moved from New York City to to Stepford, Connecticut. Um, Now, the new neighborhood that they moved into was super prim and proper and the people were very formal. So the women wore dresses, the men dressed up in like smoking jackets at night and they were very formal with how they introduced themselves to each other and in the type of conversations that they had. And because she moved into this area and everyone was so formal that, you know, she thought to herself, well, something isn't right about this. And uh, she was like, I got to she tried to get to the bottom of it, but it was the fact that something threw her off about the formality of the people. And that's what Stepford service is. Stepford service is this, formal type of service, very scripted, very not, it's not relational, it's transactional, right? So the people that, 
who deliver step for service are typically in formalized uniforms. They have they have their hair groomed a certain length, a, a certain way. Their the dresses, their suits, their pants tailored a certain way. It's stilted. It's scripted. Uh, it's a, slightly insincere in the sense that it's not relatable. But one of the things that the book was saying was you want to actually have a relatable customer service. So people are looking for relatable customer service nowadays, and they're not looking for stilted customer service. Again, this is a generalization about an idea of how customer service works. And again, a lot of this is driven by locale, but it's also driven by how companies in general are doing business. So you may have noticed that there's maybe slight differences in the formality of depending on where you get certain products or services, some emails that you get are, have a little more, a little less formal language in them and they're more folksy um, for lack of a better term in terms of how they know, Hey, did you, Hey, Micah, did you receive great service today? Or, or, Hey, Micah, what did you think about your customer experience today? Or, Hey, this, or Hey, that versus saying, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Micah. What did you think about this? So this is something to really think about. If you are in a business where you can actually leverage a less formal approach to your customer service, then you actually may be driving yourself in the better direction of relatability. Here's an interesting thing about relatability, which is what customer surveyed largely say that they want in in a, uh, the customer service delivery. They want to be able to relate to the company that they're doing business with versus them being overly manicured experiences where they have to try to figure out whether or not the they're going to get the best service or whether or not the person's being sincere with them and is going to deliver on what they say. So th I thought that was super interesting, a super interesting thought. So this concept of authentic customer service came up and authentic customer service that relates to how business and customer service is actually being done. There is, an, there is another concept that is introduced in the book, and it comes from a French word for the convergence of factors. The word is called terroir, terroir, almost like terror, but not terror because it's a French word and there's an I in there. So it's called terroir. And basically this convergence of factors relates to the fact that your business from a customer service standpoint should have a convergence of factors that come together to help a person to have a sense of locale or essentially a place, the place to go to. And so in some customer service circles, in some talks that I've been into, I've been to and I've observed, they call this, they call this concept of terroir uh, the third place. And so when creating the third place or this terroir in your business, you want to converge how your customer service is delivered. So this authentic customer service from your employees. You want your, if you're a brick and mortar, you want your, the, the, how the deliverables or the atmosphere or environment of your place to serve that sense of the customer. So when they walk in, are they, is, are, is their sense of sight and hearing being captivated by the environment? Is their sense of um, touch being served by whatever experience you have? And you should be hitting customers on with multiple senses. So theoretically, if you were to actually practically put terroir, into practice at your business, then your customer service experience looks like a 3D form of delivery. And does your customer actually have, when they experience what it's like to do business with you, do they have a 3D sense? Are they getting hit through multiple senses with how to engage with your business? And if not, here's a question. How can you do that? 
I want you to think about your business, no matter what business you're in. So you may be in the trades, you may be in a product or retail-based business, or you may be in a service-based business. Is there a way that you can get your customers on a customer service level to interact with your business on a 3D level? Can you invoke multiple senses through customer deliver service delivery to engage the multiple senses of theirs? Now, when I say engage multiple senses, the first thing you may think about is sight and smell. And if you're a plumber, well, there's that. But oftentimes, what I've seen in the most effective ways that plumbers bring in this sense of customer service is to bring the customer down and show them physically what they're doing. Show them what tools they're going to use to get it done and then demonstrate to them how it works. Because when a person has an understanding, now we're talking about the plumber, about how hard a task is to do, then they oftentimes have less complaints about the price for which you're charging to do the hard thing. When it comes to delivering customer service experience in, with food, you could have just a plain restaurant where you serve people, whatever specific domain or dish that you have or you're going to use, but that doesn't serve your customer service in a 3D way. It doesn't really serve that terroir. If you have a business located in a neighborhood that is famous for something, you should introduce elements of that neighborhood in your business. Have them feel connected to the sense of place. And you should train your employees to deliver that feeling of locale, that sense of place on a regular basis. When you do that, not only do you endear your customers and do they feel the sense of authenticity, but it makes them want to come back and it makes them want to stay. And customers who stay tend to pay more and they stay longer. CLV should be your priority. Customer lifetime value. The ability to keep a customer for a period of time paying whatever they're paying for over that period of time that they're with your business. Customer lifetime value. You want to improve customer lifetime value on a regular basis. And you have to do that by continually reassessing your deliverables and how you're delivering your service, your product, um, and your business. But you have to have a system for this. So in order to create a system for terroir, that third place, you have to first look at, do I have to maybe renovate my business? Or how, what is my current customer experience? And if you don't know what your current customer experience is, then you should ask, guess who? Your customers. Ask them what it's like to do business with you. Because if you don't know what it's like to do business with you, how in the world can you adjust and to make changes in the way in which you do business? Once you understand how you do business, then you can deploy a strategy about either making that repeatable or making it even better. Even if you deliver at a high level for customer service to your business, like you have touch points after they buy with you, you call them, you have white glove service, there's always ways to level up. How can you create a 3D sense of customer service? How can you bring in their other senses when it comes to what you do for your business? That is the rub. That is terroir. That is the opposite of Stepford service. So avoid Stepford service. Avoid the, the appearance of in uh, being inauthentic or inauthenticity, and people will relate to you and they'll tell other people about doing business with you. But, but more importantly, you want to make the, you want to make doing business with you easy and invoke all the senses. So just a strategy for customer service. I'm interested to hear what you, th you think about this. I wanted to let you know something too. We redesigned the Common Sense Show website 
And now there is a business resources page. And if you're listening to this show on a regular basis and you actually are trying to start your business or ramp it up and you, there are some systems and strategies that you don't have yet in your business, that business resources page is a great way for you to understand how to implement these things in your business. So there's some, I have some books that I recommend. It's basically called Micah's Recommended Reading there. So go check that out and, and buy a copy of whatever is on there. There's also ways for you to uh, purchase, you can um, go through there and figure out some of the vendors that I work with. So you can try to figure out how you can use those in your business. Like if you need signage inside your business or after talking about customer service today and, and, and engaging in uh, this 3D service, you may you may want extra signs or, or vinyl stickers or whatever the case is. You can go to that business resource page and it's there. There's also a, a place where you can go and get a, a web hosting. If you need web hosting for your business, there's a lot of startup resources there. Um, there's a lot of resources on that business page where you can add to what you currently have. So check it out. So it's the common sense podcast.com that sense as in dollars and um, dot com. And it's the business resources page. Check out those business resources and make sure that all those business resources that are on that page you have for your business, because uh, that's why uh, it, I have, I put that up for you. And so over time, I'm going to be adding to that business resources page because as I learn about products that we use that actually work, I want you to use them in your business as well. So I will put that in the business resources page. And this won't be the only time that I talk to you about this because that business resources page is crucially important to your success as, uh, as an entrepreneur and a small business owner, making sure that you're bringing in the best elements to level up and create systems for your business. So I'm working on a bunch of stuff right now. I am busy across the board and I'm working on some unique materials that I can give away to you as well so that you can use those to help you build systems and processes in your business. But it starts with the business's resources page. And remember, those, the, those resources will help you create that sense of terroir, 3D, 3D customer service, engage the senses of your customer, and uh, above all, Use your common sense in your business and your business will grow. But for now, I'm out of here, Charlie. See you later. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Common Sense Show, hosted by Michael Logan. The producer for The Common Sense Show is Paul Logan. To reach out to Micah and The Common Sense Show, talk to us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search The Common Sense Show. And if you enjoy the show, Please don't forget to rate and or review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Thank you for listening.